Hello everyone, welcome back to Endless Learning. Today, we're diving into the second lesson of our Stable Diffusion video series. If you're new here, I recommend watching the first videos to get a solid grasp of the fundamentals before progressing to the topic we're covering today. I'm excited to talk about the layout of the Stable Diffusion interface. Navigate to the Stable Diffusion installation directory and launch the web UI user by opening the Windows batch file. This action will initiate a terminal window and subsequently start the Stable Diffusion interface. Here is the Stable Diffusion interface. Let's explore the options one by one. The first option is Stable Diffusion Checkpoint. A Stable Diffusion Checkpoint, or Model Checkpoint, is like a saved progress file for the Stable Diffusion model capturing its weights and settings at a certain moment during training. You can obtain the Stable Diffusion models from Civitai.com, where Epic Photogasm stands out for its ability to produce realistic portraits, interiors, and photorealistic visuals. Each checkpoint showcases unique capabilities and limitations shaped by the data it was trained on. To use a checkpoint, you must download the file to a designated folder. Copy and paste the downloaded file in specific folder After the copy, just press. Activate the Stable Diffusion Checkpoint Refresh button, which you can find in the drop-down menu. This process makes the models visible for selection and use. Additionally, we can download models from the Hugging Face website, including the Stable Diffusion 1.5 and Stable Diffusion 2.1 models. You can choose whichever version you prefer for download and use. In the next text-to-image feature, in the context of Stable Diffusion, a text-to-image model, prompt, and negative prompt play crucial roles in guiding the image generation process. Prompt. This is the text description you provide to the model, detailing what you want to see in the generated image. The prompt should be as descriptive and specific as possible to guide the model towards creating an image that matches your vision. It outlines the scene, subjects, style, and any particular elements or atmosphere you wish to include. For example, a sunlit living room in a modern Scandinavian-style apartment tells the model the setting, style, and lighting conditions you're aiming for. Negative prompt, on the other hand, a negative prompt tells the model what to avoid in the generated image. It's used to exclude specific elements, themes, or characteristics that you don't want to appear. For instance, saying avoid dark and cluttered spaces instructs the model to steer clear of generating images with those attributes. Negative prompts help refine the output by preventing the inclusion of unwanted features, thus getting closer to the desired outcome. Both prompt types are integral to shaping the final image. By effectively using positive, what to include, and negative, what to exclude, prompts users can significantly influence the direction and quality of the images stable diffusion generates, making the tool more versatile and capable of producing tailored results. In the upcoming video, I will cover the next sampling method in details separately. Next sampling steps. If you generate an image with more steps, it makes the picture clearer but takes more time to generate. However, if you generate an image with fewer steps, the process is quicker, but the picture may not be as detailed. Next hires fix. The hires fix in stable diffusion is a tool that helps make big, high quality pictures without losing detail or clarity. It fixes problems that happen when making images larger, so they look good even at big sizes. A refiner is a tool or process used to enhance and improve the quality of generated images. After an initial image is created, the refiner goes over it to sharpen details, correct imperfections, and generally make the image clearer and more visually appealing. It's like giving the image a final polish to ensure it meets high standards of quality. Next, width and height refer to the dimensions of the generated image measured in pixels. These parameters determine the size of the output image. Setting the width and height allows you to control the aspect ratio and resolution of the final image. Batch count refers to the number of separate image generation tasks you run at once, while batch size indicates the number of images generated in each task. For example, a batch size of five means each task produces five images. Adjusting these can affect the total number of images generated and how quickly they're produced. CFG scale, classifier-free guidance scale, 
controls how closely the generated image matches the input text prompt. A higher CFG scale pushes the model to follow the prompt more strictly, leading to images that are more faithful to the described details. A lower CFG scale gives the model more freedom, possibly resulting in more creative or abstract images. A seed in stable diffusion sets the starting point for generating an image, allowing the same image to be recreated exactly if the same seed is used again. The seed value to 1 typically means that a random seed will be chosen each time an image is generated. This leads to different and unique images for each generation attempt. We can reasoning the seed value from the last image in stable diffusion allows you to create an identical image again, if all other settings are the same. It ensures consistency across generations. Let's utilize the seed from the lost generation image to generate a new one. This approach ensures that stable diffusion can recreate an identical image, leveraging its capability to produce consistent results with the same seed. Stable diffusion omitted the girl from my prompt. Let's make minor adjustments and observe the output. These three images are similar because they utilized the same seeds. Next, image-to-image -image generation and stable diffusion refers to the process of transforming an input image into a new image based on certain specified attributes or styles while retaining the core essence or structure of the original image. This capability allows users to modify images in creative ways, such as changing the time of day, altering the artistic style, or adding elements that were not present in the original image. I will provide an example by uploading this image and modifying it to depict nighttime. Type prompt, transform this daytime living room interior into a cozy and tranquil nighttime atmosphere with soft artificial lighting from the lamps and gentle moonlight filtering through the window, casting subtle shadows and creating a warm, inviting ambience. Emphasize the change from day to night by adjusting the lighting and adding elements typical of the evening, like a turned-on floor lamp and the glow of streetlights outside the window. It's crucial to provide clear negative prompts to stable diffusion to specify what it should not include or alter in the image. Do not retain the daytime characteristics such as bright sunlight, clear daylight, or a sunny atmosphere. Avoid any elements that suggest daytime, like sunbeams, bright outdoor lighting, or a clear blue sky visible through the window. Click Generate These Prompts guide the model to apply the desired changes while explicitly stating what elements to exclude, ensuring a clearer understanding of the intended transformation. Click Generate Stable Diffusion uses deep learning models trained on a diverse dataset of images and their associated descriptions to understand and manipulate visual content. When you provide an input image along with a text prompt that describes the desired changes, the model interprets these instructions and generates an output image that reflects the requested modifications. The key advantage of image-to-image -image translation with stable diffusion is its flexibility and the high quality of the generated images, allowing for detailed and nuanced transformations based on the input prompt and image. Stable diffusion did not match my input text prompt because the CFG scale value was too low. By increasing this value and trying again, we should see the output adhere more closely to the prompt. The rest of the settings and processes work similarly to what we observe in the text to image generation process. Next option is extras. It helps to resize the image. Batch process also available. Next PNG info. The PNG info usually refers to the metadata associated with a PNG image file which can include details like text prompts, seeds, steps, used during the generation of the image. This information is useful for replicating or understanding the conditions under which the image was created. That can be directly copied to the text to image settings to replicate or understand the creation process of the image. Checkpoint Manager, it handles the saving and loading of checkpoints. This allows users to stop and resume training at specific intervals and can also be useful when wanting to revert to a previous state of the model. Train, 
This refers to the process of teaching the model with data. During training, the model learns to generate images that are similar to the ones in the training dataset. Settings. These are the parameters and configurations that define how the model is trained. Settings can include the learning rate, batch size, number of epochs, and other hyperparameters. Extension options. These might refer to additional features or plugins that can extend the functionality of stable diffusion, such as custom layers, new training techniques, or support for different file formats. Thank you for joining me in this lesson. If you found this tutorial helpful, please like, share, and subscribe to Endless Learning for more tips and tricks on making the most of AI in your creative journey. Stay curious, and I'll see you in the next video.